Hi everybody, so I'm going to start my Christmas journal for 2020 series today. Um, it's much later than I'd normally do it. Um, I'm probably going to have a slightly different approach to it this year because obviously starting it a lot later and obviously this year has been a bit weird. Um, but I am going to do a Christmas journal and I'm going to do a few different techniques this year hopefully. Um, I don't know how many videos I'm going to manage, but I'm going to try and do as many as I can just to kind of explain what I'm doing in case anybody wants to see and um, make a journal too, maybe. <laughs> so this is going to be part one, ideas and supplies. So I'm going to show you what I've collected so far, which is um, not everything on this shelf, but um, I'm going to go through what I've got here that I've collected or that, you know stuff that I've pulled out from my Christmas boxes. Um, and then I'm going to just talk about my ideas and how I'm going to do it. So... Let's have a look. Okay, so the first thing I wanted to do um, before I even start making the journal was to um, create a little sort of space with all my journaly bits, paper bits and Christmassy things on. Um, it's actually really warm today. It's the end of November and it's like 20 odd degrees outside, Celsius that is, and really hot. <laughs> So I kind of wish it was raining for today and cold, but it's not. Um, but anyway, I'm trying to get myself in the mood. So there's all my Christmassy things up. Um, so let's have a closer look. So this is um, some origami paper stars I made and a little wreath I made a few years ago. And my little robin decoration. Just a few things I pulled out of the boxes. Um, so I have on my shelf my Christmas scrapbook, which I'm going to show you a couple of pages of. Um, these are archived planner um, archives. <laughs> so my Christmas planner for the past few years, I've just archived them in these two things. I think I've got a couple of videos showing you those. Um, and then these are the three Christmas journals for the past three years, 2017, 2018, 2019. Um, as you can see, they got dramatically bigger each year. I'm not going to go any bigger than this. In fact, I probably it'll be smaller this year um, for pre-explained reasons. Um, and then I got myself an advent calendar, um, it's a German one I believe, um, based on a, well, using a vintage design, because it kind of fits in with my theme for the year, which as you can see is going to be like gnomes and fairyland and sort of, I don't know, more like <laughs> an escapism type Christmas. <laughs> I figured that was the way to go this year. So yeah, all cute like little gnomes and little animals and things. I've got my a little Christmassy ball with my essential oils in, my Christmas robin, my mum sent, some Christmassy pens and a couple of um, wide washi tape from MT brand which I thought might be quite useful. And then the next shelf down I've got, this is my recipe files. In here when I um, go th find recipes or go through magazines and pull out recipes I shove them in here until I've like tried and tested them and then if I try them enough and test them enough and they're good they end up going in my Christmas planner. Um, but yeah, for the moment, that's just sort of like a, a few things in there, pull from magazines. This is like a box of scraps, and I'm going to show you the insides. So, um, I'll pull that off. Sorry about the wobbly camera, by the way, it's all handheld. At the back there, you can see two scrapbooks that my mum gave me. They're her scrapbook, Christmas scrapbooks. You thought I'd quite like to have them here. I've got a box of fabric, and this is the journal idea so far. This is my journal so far. So I'm pulling that off because I need to explain that to you. Um, I've got a couple of books here that I bought um, secondhand, really cheap, and I'm going to pull those apart to use the papers if I haven't done already. I can't remember. So I'll show you those. This is my Christmas journal storage file, which I used last year, and I'm going to use it again. So I'm going to pull that off the shelf show you that. These are just some Christmas magazines I have. Um, either people have sent them to me or I've found them second hand because they're English ones. Um, so when I feel like it I can go through those and take pictures out, cut things out or whatever. And then this is my larger paper scraps. So I'm going to show you those. Okay so normally when I'm starting to think about um, any project for Christmas, the first place I go 
um, is Pinterest. And I have a, um, where is it, a winter Christmas collection of boards on here, which I've been sort of adding to over the years. And some of them are sort of like themed according to crafts or like, um, so for example, last year I did a lot of things to do with like um, kitchenware, crockery, mugs and cups and things. So I sort of collected loads and loads of images that I liked on Pinterest and sort of stuck them in my scrapbook. So this year, I, as I said, I was thinking about doing more like um, gnomes and fairyland. So I came on here and just sort of collected a few images of things that I like. Um, oh look, there's, I mean, there's my advent calendar. <laughs> the image. I mean, I found. I think I found that image last year. I loved it. And I didn't realise I could get hold of it still. So that was quite good. So yeah, lots of cute little images on here. Um, some toadstools and mushrooms and things, just to sort of give myself an idea of um, what kind of things I'm interested in this year, basically. And then the next thing I normally do is get my Christmas scrapbook out. This is just a moleskin, um, I don't know what it's called actually, a friend gave it to me um, a while ago. And um, it's just, I just like the size. Um, I just stick all the pictures in here, things that I like. Um, and I've been doing this for a few years now. And this in itself is just a really fun thing to do. Just um, cutting things out and sticking them down. So some of these images are from Pinterest. Um, some of them are from magazines, some of them are sort of photocopies from picture books that I have, some gift cards, stickers. I basically just shove anything in here that I just like, as you do with a scrapbook. Um, so I'm trying to get to the... I think this was last year. Yeah, here we go. Here's the crockery from last year. Um, and then the, these are sort of bits that I printed off this year. Um, so toadstooly type things. Just a mixture of like a mixture of things like interiors, just because I like looking at Christmassy interiors, and you know, this is all. Um, these are actually fabric designs of Spoonflower. Spoonflower is a website where people can design their own um, textiles, fabric designs. Um, and I went on there and I looked at what Christmassy designs there were because I'm going to go for a more textile-y theme this year as well and patchwork that I like. So yeah, there's a few images I've printed off. I haven't printed off everything of Pinterest, but enough for me to kind of, you know, get some ideas going, basically. And that's actually some fabric I found online. I didn't buy it, and I wish I had now. <laughs> but um, somebody else bought it, it was like vintage fabric. But yeah, so that's the next step. And then it's back to Pinterest to have a look to see what kind of journal I want to make this year. So, I mean, I think I probably saw this technique on, I might have seen it on YouTube first, I don't quite remember. But um, I really wanted to do something quite flexible this year. So rather than making the book up um, ready with all the pages in order, I wanted to do it where I could kind of not decide how many pages until I'd finished. <laughs> so, okay, I'll explain what I mean. So basically, um, I wanted to do loose pages. I want to just sit down with a page, a piece of paper, and just do what I want on it. And then by the end of um, the Christmas period, I'll have a pile of pages and then assemble them into a book. That was my idea. So um, one way to do it would be to do ring bound. So I've done that in the past where you... Um, Obviously, these are loose leaf, and you punch holes and put them in a ring binder. So that's one option. But then another one that I came across, which is not actually... I couldn't find any good images of it on Pinterest, but basically it's a way of um, binding where... I mean, here they've done it with signatures. You can see these are all signatures, and then they're sewn in. Um, but there is a technique of doing it with Coptic stitch, I think it's called, where these are all just loose pages, and you can um, bind the loose pages with uh, embroidery thread or some sort of thread at the end. 
Um, and then the cover, there's actually no spine on this. Um, I mean, I suppose you could add one, but um, I don't know if I will. I'm not sure yet. But basically the cover, the front cover and the back cover are just like loose pieces as well, like loose pieces of card or whatever. And I thought it might be quite fun to do more like a textiles, fabric-y cover um, for this year. Because I kind of want to do more like... I haven't got any pictures here, have I? I wanted to do something a bit more um, sort of cosy and snuggly. So <laughs> I was thinking about doing something fabric this year, basically, for my cover. So then um, I have already a sort of like a collection of um, Christmassy fabrics. Um, so, for example, this is like a nice brushed cotton that I got. I got this from a second-hand shop here. Um, and it's quite snuggly, cosy. Um, and then I've got um, some other fabrics I had left over from when I made Christmas stockings for family members. Um, this is quite nice. This is um, a handkerchief. Um, I mean, I'm not sure about the colour, the black, but I do like the, the little houses all over it. They're really cute. So perhaps I can use that somehow. Um, some more like leftover bits of fabric from other projects. I used these to make a cushion cover last year. Um, that's a handkerchief. I think I got that free when I ordered a Christmas book. I can't remember. Um, and then this is the fabric. I bought this fabric new this year. It's the only one I've bought new. And it's, um, I'm probably going to use this as the background, I think, because it's nice, sort of traditionally Christmassy with the holly and everything. Um, and then I bought a few trimmings, which I can use um, like on the edges of pages or perhaps on the edge of the book or on tags and things. Um, and I've already used these ribbons for a few other projects as well. So I have my little um, fabric stash to work with when I make the cover. And in here, this is, I got this, it was like um, a faux antique book. I don't know if I've showed this, but um, it's a, like an antique book uh, box thing. I got it from a 100 yen shop and just covered it with some random paper I had. And I've just shoved in here some embroidery threads that I bought um, in my my sort of colour theme that I'm doing. Um, some few scraps that are left over. Some little, I don't know if you can see these because of the glare, but... Um, it's like an acorn iron-on, what do you call them? I'm just trying to think, I know the Japanese name, like an iron-on um, thing <laughs> that you put on fabric. They're called wapen in Japanese for reference, but yeah, one of those. And then this is like a, they call it a Tyrol, Tyrol, Tyrol ribbon, um, which I thought would go with my theme as well. So there's that one. Oh, and I got these because I was wondering whether to use these for like a fastening. Um, they're little, they're wooden, they're not, I know traditionally they can be made of like um, reindeer or reindeer horn, I think, but I, I just bought wooden ones because that seemed a bit nicer. Um, little wooden toggles, because I thought that might go with a little sort of gnome theme I've got going on, I'm not sure yet. Who knows, I may not have time to do any of it, but this is the plan. Um, okay, so the next thing I can show you is what I've got so far for the actual journal. So what I did, um, I basically, I, I took apart an old sketch, not an old sketchbook, a sketchbook that has quite sturdy um, watercolour paper. It's quite thick. So, and it, it, and it should stand up to quite a lot of um, adding things and sewing things on and painting and, you know, sticking photos and things. Um, and I didn't really measure them as such, I just cut, I think it, the actual sketchbook was double the size. I just cut all the pages out and then cut them in half and then this is the size. Um, it doesn't, I mean the, for reference it's 22 centimetres by 15, but obviously you could do it any size you wanted. They're all the same size, I don't know how many pages I've got. But I figure if I run out or I want to add more, I can just get another 
um, sketchbook or if I've got loads left over at the end I can just use them for sketches so it is the ultimate flexible <laughs> junk journal so far um, or journal though maybe it's not really a junk journal and then for the cover I thought well I need to cut the cover a bit bigger because when I bind it if I do manage to do it properly and not make a complete pig's ear um, the, the pages will be flush here to this side yeah so it will be like they'll be like that god it's heavy if I use all those pages and then that will go on there like that and then the idea being that I would then sew the Coptic stitch punch holes through and then sew the Coptic stitch through if I can find a good photo to explain what I mean I'll insert it here But yeah, the idea is that I, I would bind along this edge and I wanted to leave a gap on this side so that if I do tag, tags, tabs, or like if I use some of the trimmings to kind of stick out the side, I've got a little bit of like space along here. Um, so yeah, the pages I'm going to, I don't know how much I'm going to do in advance because it's already the 20th of November. Yeah, so I've got, what, 10 days-ish to do any prep and I don't have much free time to do it for so many other things to do. So I don't know how much prep I'm going to do, but if I don't do any prep at all in terms of the pages, this is going to sit on my desk and when I come to do a page, I will take one out and I will do whatever I want on it. And I'll probably leave like um, a bit of space along this edge, obviously, because that's where the stitches will go. And then I'm going to take it from there. And I will obviously update you as I go. So as for the cover, I'm probably, I'm not going to do too much detail. I've just realised this is going to be a really long video. But <laughs> for the cover, I'm going to cover it with fabric and probably put some sort of soft wadding behind it. Um, so the cover is going to be sort of like a fabric embroidered, I don't know what cover. Um, eventually when I do it so it's going to be sort of like that kind of <laughs> kind of thing with like maybe sewing some bits on some bits of whatchamacallits I don't know but um I will do a video when I construct the cover to show you what I'm doing so in terms of collecting ephemera and paper and bits and bobs to use in the journal um I got this large box which is containing anything A4 size or larger. So I'll just sort of show you through what I've got so far. This is a catalogue my friend gave me for, it's like a Japanese chocolate company and all the cute things they do. Um, so I can show that in detail when I use it, if I use it. I have bits cut out from magazines. Um, cosy images that I liked um, that I might use I might not use them I'm not sure I've got some ignore that one I've got some drawings I did I made like um, I designed a colouring sheet this year for some friends children here it is it looks like that um, so I'm probably going to use this at some point in the, the journal. Um, but these are also, this is the, just the original doodly drawings that I have. So I might use those in there. Some little houses. I've got Christmas cards from people. I've got, um, this was me trying to explore my colour palette for this year. Because I did try and choose a colour palette. I don't know how much I'll stick to it. But this was me experimenting with paints. So I might use that in there. This is some stuff I bought from Etsy from a shop called Home Book and Treasure because there was like a little gnome themed collection on there. So I'll probably use those or some of them at some point. Another Christmas card. I got these from a friend. I might try and put these ones in because they're cute. Fairy, angely things. Um, oh, they should probably go in my little box, shouldn't they? Those are more like sewing on. Little wooden... Um, wooden decorative parts, that's what they're called. <laughs> I, 
I, this is in here because I don't know what to do with it because I love it. It's my the advent calendar from last year and I can't bear to chuck it and I don't know what to do with it. So that's in there. Um, a friend sent me this, my son and I, this wonderful book, How Winston Delivered Christmas because it has... 24 and a half chapters, obviously this is just the, the cover, um, 24 and a half chapters um, to read every night, so that's going to be something we're going to do this Christmas. So I took the dust jacket off because um, they annoy me. They just come off all the time anyway, so I just take them off and perhaps I can use that for something. And then I have just a collection, oh, that must be the only one I have left, <laughs> a little toadstool. I don't know what I'll do with him, but he's in there. Um, I have a collection of larger scraps in here, which I think I'll take out of the cellophane now. So this is a mixture of just like old, you know, random scraps. This is um, a little collar sheet my friend did, she sent me, which is really lovely, so I'm going to use that. Some gorgeous little trees, and this is one her daughter drew as well, which is so cute. So I'm definitely going to put that in my, my journal. Yeah, and then these are just what's left over from when I made my planner dividers in my s Christmas planner. So I just got a few of those, so I might use those papers. Um, so that's the large pieces. I have these two books which I'll show you as well. So Fushigi na Kukigaru. I don't know, is that Fushigi na? I'm not quite what that means. Unusual? Strange? I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea. Cookie Girl, I love to see Cookie Girl. Um, so this is... The artwork is by um, the lady that does all the designing for the tea brand, Carol Chapek. Um, and I really like her stuff. So I got this book and I've, I've already taken it apart because I wanted to send some to some friends, some other images. So all that's left is the stuff that I had left to keep. Um, just some cute little designs. Um, I think... Yeah, they're pretty much the same size as my, my journal pages. So that's useful. So whatever size that is. Just a few cute things in there. They're not really for my theme, but I thought they were quite cute. And we always make gingerbread every Christmas, so I could probably use those. Um, and I may use the jacket cover for next year, because that would make a really nice cover, I think. Um, and then this one was falling apart when I got it, so I just sort of encouraged it to fall apart more. I think it's an American, yeah, an American book from the 80s. Although the drawings look very 70s to me. Um, but there's a few, like this is gorgeous, I love this little house scene here. Um, I'm not going to use all of these pages, so I, I'm not going to, I don't know what I'm going to do with the, <laughs> the remainder, but things like that I'll use probably, or I might use. I may have these in my stash for a while. Um, there was one little, where is it? It's like an elf story, Christmas gnome thing, somewhere. Here. So, I mean, I've seen these images around, but I didn't know where they come from, um, or who the artist is, it doesn't actually say. But um, this is quite cute with the little elves, so perhaps I'll use some of these pages. I love this one where they're all making toys, and that's quite cute. Oh yeah, and that one I've seen around quite a lot on Pinterest. So perhaps I can use that for something. Um, and then finally we come to my Christmas box, which has all my smaller bits in. So I'm going to change the angle to show you this because it's a bit awkward otherwise. Okay, I'm filming against the light so it might not be so clear but um, this is my like little storage storage file where I can keep all my small bits and bobs and have it open on the desk next to me um, so I have things like uh, letters sparkly letters and numbers in here I have oh these are like little labels I made and printed off just plain ones and I printed them on sticker paper so should be able to stick those down fairly easily if I need them this is just some fabric washi tape, so it's on a backing and you peel it off. That might be useful. It's quite good for using as a book spine, actually. Yeah, that's everything in there, just more labels. In here, do I have anything in here? My little tin. 
Oh, just a few little, these are just some baubles that I drew in my sketchbook. So they're there in case I use them. So that's another thing I've been doing is if I do anything in a sketchbook um, on the lead up to Christmas, um, I just cut the pages up. So you can see these are just like random bits. And I'm just going to use those in, in there somewhere. Some washi tapes I have left over that people have given me. Tags and things like that. This is an empty Christmas washi tape. Ooh, flying it across the room. Um, I thought those colours were quite sweet. Focus. And then obviously I have my little washi tape things here with what's left from last year. Oh, actually not less than last year. These are left from last year, but these are new ones that I got from 100 Gen Shop, I think. They're quite neutral, but they're quite useful. And my lovely tin, my Christmas rooster's tin. What have I got in here? Ah, I did, ah, this is another thing I bought from Etsy. Um, that's not, that's from some random old book. It was like a collage sheet of um, forest animals. Um, so there's quite a few bits in there. Um, mushrooms and deer and things like that. Um, so I'm gonna use that one. Over here is more bits that I just chopped out of my sketchbook. Um, these little, I was playing around with red paint and then using a white pen over the top. So I've got all these bits. That was when I was thinking about doing like an elf theme, elf gnome theme. So yeah, just bits there. The random things I printed off, some fabrics that I liked. There's a stamp from last year. These are like little vintage um, cards that I got in a shop ages ago. I thought this might work. What else? Okay, these are much the same thing, so <laughs> I'll just show you one or two. And um, these are, oh god, where did I get these? These are ones I bought from, these are like um, a proper scrapbooking business um, brand. I don't know what they're called, can't remember. American probably. So all, yeah, all of those came from like a little set. Christmassy bits in there, that kind of thing. I thought those would work for a woodland theme. Dropping them all over the floor. Um, that I think that's like just a label I made. Um, not exciting. And um, these are my little houses that I printed out on card. My little fairy houses I printed out on card. I don't know what I'm going to do with them, but um, they're there. More bits from my sketchbook photos so as you can see it's just like that's another thing I painted it's just random stuff anything that I could think of um this was when I was experimenting with paint to get you know decide which colors to use things like that some more bits and this is from my Laura Ingalls Wilder book this was when I was trying to decide on my color scheme um so I sort of played around with um colors on photoshop seeing which ones I liked you gonna focus. Um, and then I had like a few days experimenting with paints and trying to get the colours right. Um, so I've showed those in for reference but also because I might just put them on the pages. Because I basically use anything and everything in the journal. More bits from my sketchbook. <laughs> These are like tape designs I did. Um, well, so we've got more washi tape. More bits from my sketchbook. That is, this is photocopies of um, this book, Journal of the Forest, by Elsa Bess, was it, Beshkov. Because um, they've got little toadstooly hats, which is cute, and goes to the theme. That's another one. Another one. More Loring of Wilder. And just some random um, paper. <laughs> Okay, so I hope that wasn't too tediously long and too much stuff to look at, but um, I just wanted to go through uh, my process, my preparation, and things I have ready to um, start making things. So today I'm going to work on the cover. I'm going to cut out some fabric scraps and get my cover cardboard pieces and just kind of have a play around basically. And um, I'll be back to show you what I've done. 
So I hope you um, enjoyed the video and got some ideas and if you're starting a journal yourself let me know and maybe we can all look at each other's junk journals together. Okay, alright, bye for now. Bye!